let's talk about the universal oxygen sensor operation. How does it actually work? The computer is going to control an electrical current and that current is going to act like an oxygen sensor pump and it's going to release or absorb oxygen and that is going to be determined by the air fuel mixture. The optimum air fuel mixture is a lambda of one for gasoline as the amount of current flow is telling us the correction needed to return the sensor back to a lambda of one depending on the fuel. So if we have a very lean condition we have to add fuel. If we have a rich condition we have to subtract fuel. Remember that a GDI system adds or subtracts fuel by adjusting fuel pressure using a solenoid called fuel volume control or fuel volume regulation. If it's not a GDI system, then the injector pulse width is going to be changed. The two wires are called a pumping current wires. The voltages on these pumping current wires, it's going to vary between manufacturers. One of the two current pumping wires is going to have a voltage supplied by the computer while the other is going to be the return back to the computer. Some have 3.0 volts on their reference and 3.3 volts on the current wire. Now remember that the 3.3 volts is going to vary, and that's very slightly, as the current flows but this is going to be very very tiny changes and you may not catch them. Others are manufacturers are going to use 2.7 and 3.0 on their wires, their pumping wires. It's common to see a difference between the two pumping wires of a nominal 300 millivolts. Nominal means somewhere around 300 millivolts and it's going to fluctuate slightly based on the current flow, how much is pumping. There are sensors that use different wires, arrangements, and that means there's going to be another wire on some sensors, and that wire is going to give us a voltage representation of how much current is flowing. It's called the signal wire of all things. There are even sensors, then they have an additional wire, and it would be a ground reference for the signal. All sensors do not have the same amount of wire. Once again, it's very important to use a vehicle-specific schematic to determine what sensor is on the vehicle you're working on. On the signal circuit, there is circuitry to convert the current flow, the pumping current, to a voltage. Now, let's talk about this whole thing and wrap it up here. There are two oxygen sensors inside the universal oxygen sensor. One sensor is a reference to ambient oxygen. The other is a reference to the exhaust oxygen. As the rich exhaust changes between lean and rich, the sensor voltage is what's changing. So as the exhaust changes from rich to lean, lean to rich, as a rich exhaust changes to lean or as a lean exhaust changes to stoichiometric. Let's look at this graph. Already on the graph we have some gold or orange values. Those are lambda values. On the left side of the graph we see a rich value of decimo 8 and then in the dotted line we see the stoichiometric value of lambda value of 1 and then as we go to the right we see leaner lambda values. Now let's draw a line through those dots. Now this line is going to represent how much current is pumping through the chambers to release or to absorb oxygen. These values are going to tell us how much current is required to return the sample back to ideal. So let's look over here at point eight. If we had a rich running engine and the lambda value was decimal eight, that means the computer would have to pump a 1.5 milliamp negative current through the sensor to get it to return back to a lambda value of one. And when it gets to a lambda value of one, current is going to stop flowing. 
when we look at the lean side, it takes three quarters of a milliamp to change the value of 1.2 back to a lambda value of 1.0. And as we can see, the leaner it gets, the more milliamps are required. Now, the reference sensor voltage is about decimal four or five volts, and that would be at a lambda value of one. The computer is going to pump oxygen in and out of the monitoring chamber to return the reference back to that lambda value of one. The amount of oxygen that's required to reach stoichiometric is going to vary depending on the air-fuel ratio. The current equals air-fuel ratio. The computer knows the amount of current that's required to the pumping oxygen in and out of the monitoring chamber. When we look at that chart back there, we knew exactly how much current was required. For example, we did the rich 0.8 back to lambda value of 1 was negative 1.5 milliamps. And the computer knows this as well. The computer is then going to convert the current value that's required to the air fuel ratio of perfect back to the lambda value of 1. So we want to summarize. After the PCM has modified the fuel delivery, added or subtracted fuel, and the air fuel trim has corrected the fuel mixture. Now don't forget to look at long term fuel trim or fuel trims in the training video. Now the current is going to return to zero when the lambda returns to one.